ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂಶಾಂತಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಬಸ್ ಶಾಂತಿ ಟ ಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೀ ಯತಸ್ಸರ್ವಾಣಿ ಭೂತಾನಿ ಪ್ರತಿಭಾಂತಿ ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಚೈವೋಪಶಮಯ್ಯಾಂತಿ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಸತ್ಯಾತ್ಮನೇ ನಮಃ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಸಾ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸಿ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಆಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಟ್ ಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅೋ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ something which is getting manifested sustained and goes back to it right so we the, we saw that even in the um taitariya upanishad right yeah that beings are born and then they live and when they depart they go back and what they go back to is brahman yeah so we'll go back to the verse 1.2 ಜ್ಞಾನಂತೇಯ ದ್ರಷ್ಟಾದರ್ಶನ ದೃಶ್ಯ ಭೂ ಕರ್ತೇತು ಕ್ರಿಯಸ್ಮೈಸ್ಯಾತ್ಮನೆ ನಮಃ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಡೀಪ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಡೀಪ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿ ಓವರ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಡೀಪರ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದಿಸ್ needs to be dealt with um, you know in a very detailed manner here it says that he is the knower the knowledge all that is known he is the seer the act of seeing and the seen he is the actor the cause and the effect therefore salutation to him who is all knowledge himself seems to be that logically uh, everything is god that is what it means isn't it but let's go deeper into this okay so what does it mean to understand what is knower what is knowledge and what is known so in uh, vedanta what we say is the understanding of the whole of understanding of the true reality is understanding knower knowledge and the known now we can say yeah every since if everything is ishvara then everything is brahman then why to go in detail but logically only we have understood it isn't it experientially we have not understood it can you say whatever is there around is all ishvara all brahman it is not possible isn't it we are again getting into that that logically we understand whatever we are telling now but then the moment when we start implementing it is not so we have to uh, do a lot of mananam we have listened shravanam is happening but then as you keep listening as you keep knowing it and then doing the reflection on it then it slowly starts to sink in that everything around us is also brahman okay so how do we go into it we'll see the knower first knower is the gnata knower is gnata so what is the knower the knower is the subject the observer observer is the knower yeah look at it from not from ishwara look at it from yourself first okay so once you understand yourself first then you can put it to everything around okay so always you start with your part not the god's part right now so that it is easy for us to understand because otherwise vedanta is a very tough thing to understand what is knower what is no uh, knowledge you know it seems very um, uh, dictionary meaning we get to know but not the uh, the subtle meaning so the knower means the subject the one who is observing yeah you can call it as our own individual consciousness so right now if you look at it when you look at it, the drishya also then we will see what is looking at it how is it 
all that we'll go in detail but first let's understand the knower knowledge and the known first okay so the knower is the gnata refers to the observer so if i am the one who is observer i am the gnata now i am observing the screen so i this i is that observer i am the gnata and who perceives and who experiences the world so i am seeing you i am seeing okay these are the people who are there yeah and i'm experiencing it yeah so i become the gnata or the knower now when we go little deeper we will go a little more into the uh, uh, the from the gross to the subtlest okay so what is it that is eternal and unchanging that is what is the observer now if i am looking at it or uh, in the, from an external point of view i am telling that my eyes are the ones who are seeing you people but is my eyes really seeing or is it that observer which is which is within me is seeing it difficult to understand yeah so let's first go to we will come back to this i think then uh, first we will see the drik drishya then i think we will be able to understand it a little more better and then we will come back to this no or thing otherwise it's a little difficult right now okay so okay so we'll let's see this particular shloka then we will understand it this is from drik drishya viveka first shloka rupan drishyallochanandhrak tad drishyam drak manasam it's manasam okay so type over there drishya dhivrata dhivratya sakshi drgevana to drishyate okay not required to you know go through the uh, memorizing part of it but just understand it okay rupam drishyam lochanam drik rupam which is the form yeah now for example you are taking a flower the i am looking at a flower there is a form that is the rupam of the flower that is what i am seeing drishya is seeing seen lochanam is the eyes is the seer understood this one you understood there is a flower or there is an any object which is there that has a form that is the scene my eyes are seeing it yeah so rupam drishyam lochanam is drik is the seer now here don't look at it only from this now say for example i am hearing something you people are hearing my voice yeah so that voice becomes the drishyam and your ears will become the drik so when this lochanam means i hear but extrapolated to all the senses lochanam or eyes is only the lakshanam okay you look at it from all senses so you hear something from the senses and we perceive certain things isn't it yeah so then that is also so here lochanam is not just the i their literal meaning is i but extrapolated to all the senses through the ears i hear and perceive something through my skin i touch something and i perceive something through my tongue i taste something and say wow this is sweet this is salt i am able to perceive it through the nose i can smell and say oh this is a good smell this is a bad smell i can perceive it okay so lochanam is only a lakshanam it is not the literal i only okay so look at it as like one of the sense organ okay so here the i becomes the seer and the form whatever you are seeing the object becomes the scene okay now you are going a little deeper okay now 
the eye so here there is only one look at it as only one the vision is the same right so even if you have two eyes you are seeing only one object so one eye many objects through this eye i can see many objects is it clear so the eye becomes one objects become many yeah now let's go one step subtler now the eye what is seeing the eye so who's telling the eye to see it it's the mind yeah so then the mind becomes the seer and the eye becomes the seen now the mind is just one the eye can be uh, though the eye is the one it is seeing so you can uh, you know uh, what do you say the eye can hack have night blindness it can have cataract it can have short sightedness it can have long sightedness so the qualities of the eyes are many but the mind is not attached to that quality of confusion again okay i'll go back one step again i is the seer i is one many objects are there because of the object does it the will that affect the eye in any way no the object may be uh, um so maybe uh, there is a glass which is broken and you are seeing it is your eye broken because you are seeing the glass no so it is independent isn't it the object and the eye is independent the eye does not get any kind of a problem because of whatever the nature of the object is clear till here that is fine so now as per right now i'm feeling that that i is me it is the i which is seeing so i is me i is the soul or the self this is clear till here this is very important only then you will understand the vedanta directly i know it's very very hard to understand now we are going to the eye and the mind we are going one step inside okay so now here the eye can have many problems like short sightedness long sightedness night blindness can't see in the dark or it has cataract all those things but because of those things will the mind get affected by it will the mind have short sightedness or long sightedness no so the mind is not attached to the eye yeah so here the mind becomes the seer and the eye becomes the seen and now i am thinking oh i am not the eye now not just the eye i am also the mind okay till here if there is now doubts then you need to say then we'll go back that is why i want you to understand this concept very uh, well now let's go back one more what is seeing the mind there is something which is inside me which is seeing the mind now if if the atma of, of my own self is not there when i die the mind the mind can't see the eye the eye can't see any object isn't it so because there is that eye or the self which is inside me it is only because of that i am able to see the mind and i am able to see and from the mind i am able to see the eye and the eye can see the object isn't it yeah now this mind also can have various things it has various qualities hmm it their mind itself is divided also into different antakarana is there right manas buddhi chitta ahankara all that is mind right sometimes i think good sometimes i think bad everything but because of that will that self which is inside me yeah is that changing is that getting affected my inner self my atma the sakshi yeah the sakshi here the uh, the 
witness alone the uh, self is termed as sakshi the sakshi inside is it getting affected because of the various thoughts which is coming into the mind think if i'm saying that uh, if you're thinking that oh uh, i'm thinking bad but that's the mind okay the sakshi is not getting effect the atma is not getting effect i'm thinking good about something that also it is from the mind only sakshi is not getting effect i am very happy nothing to do with the sakshi i am very sad nothing to do with the sakshi yeah so it is they once you once the that witness the once that the uh, self goes out of the body then it does it experience happiness sadness nothing isn't it so whether it was inside or whether it is outside it remains neutral eternal unchanging if i think every many negative things which will my soul become bad no if i think if i do a lot of things will my soul become good no soul that particular sakshi is completely neutral nothing nothing will happen there it is only at the mind level we do certain bad activities or good activities or whatever yeah so once you understand your own self your own true self then you can understand the ultimate consciousness it so i know it is it's very very hard that's why i'm going on repeating it again and again for you okay so once you understand your own true self so it is not uh, you know initially it is important to understand your own self first than to understand the ultimate consciousness because once you understand yourself then brahman is very easy to understand it is because it is we are not able to understand that we are not able to understand this that is why we are not able to understand that so first as it is important to understand i'll see if i can find an example for you yeah okay okay so here let's look at it as now to look at to understand that the i the mind and the sakshi sorry the object the i the mind and the sakshi you're going from the gross to the subtlest to understand the quality of the mind let's understand it from even the knower perspective also then you will be able to understand both sitting together okay a person is sitting so you are sitting in a park forget about that any other person you are sitting in a park you are enjoying the beauty of a flower okay now who is seeing the flower first first the eyes are seeing the flower now is the eye getting affected because of the flower no if the flower become is a red in color will your eyes turn red in color no yeah you are just seeing it nothing happens to your eye now we go back one the eye can since uh, the eye has a layer maybe some kind of a infection and you are not able to see the flower very well because of that does the mind change that part of it no it becomes neutral there right it has nothing to do with the blurness or the clarity of the eye and now because the mind perceives a lot of things because of that flower it can 
the mind can say oh this flower looks beautiful or the mind can say the flower looks very ugly the flower looks very big it is not nice the flower looks very small it is too tiny will that sakshi inside get affected because of that no now is it is it little more better there so the sakshi which is inside you the witness who is seeing all the thoughts in the mind yeah that alone is the seer because there's nothing beyond it so you have we go we go back we go back and see so first we see is yeah i am i the i no um, then we went to the mind level am i the mind no because there's something beyond that which is seen right then there is something called as the sakshi which is the seer and that is the ultimate there's nothing beyond that okay if that is beyond that then that there is no sense there is nothing beyond that that alone is the seer and it is not the seen the rest of the things are all seen that alone is the seer is it better now okay now in this they are telling that he is the seen act of seeing and that is to be seen now let's see that you the witness the sakshi is you we have said like that is that is the seer we said right now from where is the seer coming from the ultimate consciousness yeah and from where is that flower coming that is also part of the ultimate consciousness so then what is the from that point of view from that ultimate consciousness point of view this sakshi and this the flower the consciousness in the flower is the same because it's been part of the same now why did i do all these things going around to come back to that same point if i had not come back to that if i had not rounded off like that will i be able to know my own self i will only look at it from external i will say oh this is god that is also god everything is god over but we are not looking at our own self then because we have to look at our own self again now also we have only understood it logically we haven't experienced it how do we do the reflection by seeing every object and looking at okay this has been created by the god like what i have been i have to go i means not looking at my i or my body we are still there that is why we are not able to really get the hold of this through this we are able to say that i am not the i that is i am not the physical body i am not the mind i am something beyond that that is me once you understand that then to perceive other things as that same divine becomes easier that is why this is important so go in first then you will be able to know out but without knowing the in we will not be able to understand the out yeah seems very dry and it is uh, you know difficult to follow it now let's follow let let's see the um nor gnana sorry gnata gnana and the gneya when we'll probably be able to know it more better we'll take the same example of the park okay so the knower is that individual person as let's go external okay let's look at the body then we'll go inside okay the knower is the individual person who is sitting in the park and observing the flower okay so the knower means the awareness within me 
right? The awareness is experiencing the flower. I'll repeat again. The knower is the individual person sitting in the park. You, you visualize, then you will know it. Observing the flower. Okay? So, what is this knower? No, don't look at it only from the eye. Now go back one step inside. Yeah? And see from the thought level, you see. Don't look at it from the Sakshi level. Take that middle step from the eye to the mind. So the mind is aware, yeah, that I am seeing. So I may be sitting, I may be looking at the flower externally. I may still not be experiencing the flower, isn't it? If you're daydreaming, will I look at the flower? No. So the conscious awareness in me is experiencing the flower. So what is the observer here? It's not the I. It is the conscious awareness within me. That is Jnata. Okay. Yeah. Now let's look at the Jnana, which is the knowledge. Yeah. So the knowledge is the perceiving and understanding the flower. So it is a process of cognition, right? Where we, uh, we say that the knowledge will be flowers, color, shape, fragrance, all the overall beauty, everything that we are perceiving it. That is the knowledge. Yeah. So knowledge is the experience that comes when the knower, when the awareness interacts with the flower through the senses and the mind. I'll repeat it once more. So the knowledge, so you understood who is the knower now? The conscious awareness, the sakshi is the one which is experiencing the flower. That is the knower. The knowledge or the jnana is understanding the flower's color, shape, everything through the senses and the mind, that becomes the knowledge. Yeah, so it is not just the object. Your understanding is the knowledge. Sudha is like, mm, what is this? I'm not able to understand. Is it Sudha? Hmm? One, yeah, you're a little distracted also with your grandchild. <laughs> so it is becoming a little difficult. <laughs> okay. Little tough now. <laughs> okay, it's no no problem. Okay, I'll again take, tell you. Knowledge, jnana, is the act of understanding and perceiving the flower. Yeah, yeah. Now, how that? What is that? What is happening? The flowers, color, shape, everything is the knowledge, isn't it? the color of the flower, the shape of the flower, the fragrance of the flower, everything is part of the knowledge. And how are you getting it? Through the senses and the mind, you are observing that. Or you are understanding that. You are able to cogni cognize that. Clear? The knower and the knowledge. Now comes the known or the gneya. What is the known? Yeah, the known is the flower itself. The knowledge is about the flower. Knower is the individual awareness. The known is that object. Yeah, and it is an external reality that is existing independent of the observer, isn't it? Hmm? Okay. Go on. It's okay. Understand it. Maybe you can uh, re, uh, sorry, uh, watch the uh, video again so that more and more if you uh, understand it, then you will probably get more of questions. Okay. And you will also be able to understand a little bit. Both the ways, it's good. If you get more questions, that's also nice. Yeah. Or you have understood at least a little bit, 
rest of the yoga vasishta will follow with more and more examples and more stories so don't worry these are the invocation shlokas so that is why it is going deeper once a story begins it becomes a little more lighter okay don't worry about it. so the xp this so in this example the person is the knower aware of the flower which is the knower through the process of observation and cognition which is the knowledge i'll repeat the person knower is aware of the flower which is the known through the process of observation and cognition which is the knowledge okay so now let's look at it from the vedantic part we have understood this from an external point only so here it says that the individual person which is the knower and the known yeah is from coming from the same manifestation of the same reality yeah so then both the knower and the known is brahman only and what is perceiving it the conscious awareness within your own self is the knowledge through which you are getting that right so then that is also part of the ultimate consciousness only okay so understanding this to know that the knower is that oneness that it is part so here now look at it from the ishvara brahman point of view that brahman has manifested the knower the known and the knowledge of the knower and the known together also so that is where it becomes that he becomes the knower the knowledge and the known don't worry stay with that reflect on that meditate upon it you will be able to get it more experientially okay so now if you look at it we'll go back to this verse so it says that he is the knower the knowledge and all that is to be known he is the seer the act of seeing and all that is to be seen he is the actor the cause and the effect now again the same thing you can extrapolate it he is the cause he is the cause through which all have been born see the first shloka then then you will understand what is the cause yeah being born so based on the cause the effect is also there but everything is going back to the cause so the cause and the effect everything is the same only with respect to that brahman the cause becomes the effect for the second effect to happen this becomes the cause isn't it so cause one becomes effect one the effect one becomes cause two for the effect two isn't it cause a effect a now this effect a becomes cause b isn't it no i can see blank faces okay i'll give you an example now um i uh, i told a lie yeah i've created a cause yeah i uh, for the, because of that lie i got caught that became the effect because i got caught i started hating this person so the act of caught becomes the cause yeah and this hate resulted in something else that became effect 2 so it becomes a chain did you understand that now one cause can result in one effect because of that effect because of the experience of that effect that becomes a cause for something else you do another action based on this effect so this effect becomes the cause for the second effect here this is 
this A, cos A, the effect, effect B. Sorry, what is it? Okay, cos so B. effect A, right? Cos A because gives rise to effect A. Now this effect A becomes cos B for effect B. Isn't it? Now is it clear? This concept is clear? Okay. Now you see here, when you looked at it, we are being born, we live, and we go back. So this again goes back to cause A. Isn't it? We are being born. Okay. Because we are bo being born, there is an effect that we live. And after, because we live and we, we do certain actions, we also dissolute. Or we go back to where we go back. We go back to the cause. The cycle of birth and death continues. Yeah. So who is doing all those things or who is responsible for the whole creation? Birth and death is happening, sorry, because of our own karmas. That's a thing. But the overall creation is happening because of a bigger cause and a bigger effect. And who is the cause and effect there? It is Brahman only. Because of that Brahman only, this whole creation is sustaining. In that whole creation of uh, creation, we are being born, we die. We, we are being born, we live, we die. Again, we are being born, we live, we die. In that whole cosmic creation or the whole cosmic cause. This is more very direct one, so don't worry about it. Spuranti Sikara Yasmat Anandasyam Barevanau Sarveshan Jeevanantasmai Brahmanandatmane Namaha. This is with understanding that the knower, known knowledge, the Drik, Drishya, everything is coming from the same. Source, the cause, effect, everything. To that, I give my salutation. I bow down to that supreme Brahman, yeah, from whom the dew flows the dews of delight. That is, both everything, whatever is there, the entire creation, the entire bliss, what we are under, we are feeling, all that is because of that Brahman alone, because. He is the life. He is the life of everything around us. Okay? Very direct here. Now, actual yoga was that three are just the uh, invocation kind of uh, uh, verses. We will do that in every class. Those three, we will do it together. Okay? So, this is, this is like the first verse of yoga vasishta. Okay, the other ones were more of like, like this Dhyana Shlokam sketch. Okay, from here it's very direct because only very few places you will have, we'll have to go a little more in deep. Man. Suti Kshno Brahmana Kaschet Samshaya Krishna Manasaha Agastera Shramangatva Munim Prapacha Sadaram so, there was a Brahmana by name Sutikshna. Okay? So, his mind was full of doubts, like how we have now. After knowing the knower, knowledge and the known, yeah, or not knowing the knower, knowledge and the known, we are in deep confusion. That way, his mind was also filled with a lot of doubts. What kind of doubts? It's not like, uh, you know, how to uh, get a promotion, how to make, uh, do this, how to do that, not anything about the materialistic part, 
like how we all have this vedantic uh, doubts what is god how do we seek that liberation how do we go closer to god how do we know our own true self you know those kind of doubts so he approached agastya muni's ashrama and he asked with profound reverence he was full of so the main reason main thing that we need is the um the faith that somebody is going to help us so when we approach the guru we go with that faith that we will get our answers okay that's where the reverence comes in right so he uh, goes to and he asks with profound reverence what does he ask suti kshna uvacha bhagavan dharma tatvagnya sarvashastra vinishchita samshayosti mahaneka ametam kripaya vada so o sage you are the knower of dharma what is dharma let's understand what is dharma na okay so there is something called as purushartha chatushtaya chatushtaya four what are the purushartha chatushtaya dharma artha kama and moksha those are the four purusharthas now one let's understand what is dharma dharma means the righteousness the way we live yeah dharma it says dharayati iti dharmaha i think we saw it in bhagavad gita also dharma means dharayati iti dharmaha that which upholds that which protects that which is the truth or the right way of living is dharma okay so dharma the root word is dhri dharma the root word the dhatu for dharma is dhri which means dharana karane yogya dharana karane yogya that is responsibilities duties thoughts actions that are appropriate for us yeah what are the actions what are the responsibilities so it keeps differing the dharma to each person it might differ from a societal point of view we'll have a right way of living that is where certain laws have been made isn't it you cannot murder anybody you cannot rape any person all this are dharma from the from from a society point of view individually we'll have our own dharma right as a householder it is our dharma to take care of our family members isn't it we cannot just gamble and throw away all the money we have to keep it or we have to spend it for our children's needs maybe for our education for food for shelter we can say okay i'll just eat that's all i don't have to give any kind of education to anybody to my children i don't have to teach let them just live however they want that is not our dharma so at each level the dharma will be there and at the societal level or at the 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 so the probably the community level there will be dharma isn't it from the nation level there is a dharma from a world point of view there is another dharma right one country just doesn't go and attack another country right there is a certain laws which is made because of that so on a universal scale it refers to the cosmic laws also so there is a cosmic level also from a from a universe level also there is a cosmic so it's because of those laws only because of those dharma or the cosmic laws the planets don't just go wherever they want they have a particular way to orbit around the sun isn't it so that is also the dharma of those planets so everything has a particular dharma to be managed 
so on an individual level one is the responsibilities the other one is the true purpose of our life also that is also dharma now we will see that in uh, you know bhagavad gita there is a beautiful thing which is again misunderstood also but then it becomes very clear here in third um, chapter 35th verse shreyan swadharmo vigunah स्वधर्मे परफेक्टली it is preferable to die in the discharge of one's duty than to follow the path of another which is fraught with danger i think now this is where a lot of people misunderstood this and said that krishna in bhagavad gita has told about caste system the varnas are described here the explanation is given for dharma that we should be only doing our duty that means brahmana should be only doing brahmana duty kshatriya should be doing the duty of the kshatriya so that is why vedas cannot be or pujas cannot be done by vaishnava vaishnava sorry vaishyas and shudras which is a misunderstood one what it actually means is now say for example your child was is a, is a very good artist yeah it comes very naturally he paints beautiful pictures yeah it feels as if there is life in those pictures and as a parent i will say you go become an engineer yeah and you we have we force the child to become an engineer so what is it now will the child be happy no is it doing its prescribed duty no actually it is far better to perform one's natural prescribed duty whatever is thinking up with you whatever you are passionate about whatever where in your interest lies but we give something else even though it may look very fancy oh i'm working in an it industry i will get a huge paycheck it might look very fancy but that is what shri krishna says in bhagavad gita not to do that actually do whatever you are good at don't compare yourself with somebody else there is another one which says in 18th chapter also he says the same thing श्रेयान स्वधर्मो विगुण सेम श्लोक द फर्स्ट लाइन इज रिपीटेड पर धर्म स्वनुष्ठितावनीयत कर्म कुति किलिशम सो अगेन डूइंग वन ओन धर्म ईवन दो इट इज इम पर्फेक्ट दैन टू डू अनादर्स धर्म ईवन दो पर्फेक्टली the same thing by doing one's duties a person does not incur sin means what a person will be happy doing whatever it is so he will do it without really worrying about what is happening to the results he will just do it now there are lot of places where we have seen people who work um, you know for a lot like 13 hours 14 hours they are made to work and they get so frustrated they get so irritated yeah at the same time you will see somebody who is very who is a painter maybe or who is a dancer who is a sculptor irrespective of the time yeah sometimes without really feeling hungry he won't uh, he won't eat anything he won't sleep anything he'll say i want to finish the sculpture i want to finish this canvas i want to finish painting this beautiful picture so there even though he must be working more than that maybe he is working for 15 hours 24 hours continuously also 
but he doesn't get any kind of tiredness or he doesn't feel the need to sit down also so what happens where it becomes a nishkama karma there is no karma which he will bring in because he's happy doing it he's not getting irritated and he's doing it he's just he's just doing there is no uh, you know the mind becomes thoughtless at that time yeah so when there are no thoughts there are no actions and when there are no actions there is no karma but the same thing you do done with lot of force then what happens you accumulate a lot of karma because you are you are probably scolding that person and doing yeah you are uh, getting angry for your with your parents for making you uh, do take up uh, you know and uh, become an engineer and do this particular course or job i'm just taking this as an example okay so when you start doing that you start you know whenever you feel that you're tired you're, and your boss says you have to finish this and then only you can go home the the person will start feeling bad will tell you know you know why did my parents make me do this i wasn't happy so he thought he thinks about the way his parents treated him he thinks the way his colleagues treated him he thinks the way his boss treated him all that will bring in a lot of negative thoughts and negative thoughts lead to negative actions negative karma that is what it means here actually it was the whole of uh, how a person should be is been taught in bhagavad gita no it is not told that okay only brahmanas should do this or shudras should be doing this job nothing like that whatever that person so brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra is not by birth but by his or her own actions and not that brahmana is a very superior thing and the shudra is a inferior thing everything is the same because we need everybody say suppose there are no shudras at all all the shudra parents decided not to have any babies yeah can the world survive without the services so shudras means servicing right yeah what if there are no carpenters no electricians no uh, plumbers yeah there is a blockage in your bathroom and there are no plumbers so the brahmana says no 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 i cannot do this service i'm not a shudra kshatriya says no 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 my job is only to protect i cannot do all this job a vaishya will say i'm only you know making money and making sure the economy is uh, set i cannot do this after two days three days will this brahmana akshatriya vaishya stay in that house if the if the bathroom is leaking yeah it's not possible similarly without an education without a brahmana teaching the values of life to everybody else that will also be not a good society to live in if the kshatriya is not there if we didn't have an army if we didn't have defense anybody could come and attack us and take everything you know rob us off we we've already faced once isn't it by the britishers if our if our army is not strong can we live peacefully can we sleep peacefully at night no kshatriyas are also needed our vaishyas not needed otherwise see everything the price will go up anybody can do whatever they want and uh, uh, you know the economy will be completely Uh, go you know mismanaged then also it is a problem where is the growth yeah so don't you think all four are required even without one, you know one without the other cannot survive okay so everything is looked at it on an equal platform there's no superiority and no inferiority in any of these everything is important so that is what actually Sri Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita to follow one's own dharma. Okay, so that is the dharma. That is the purushartha. Now we'll see the artha, the kama, and then leading to moksha in the next class.